eating a tangerine in the bathroom stall of the 23rd Annual Edwardian Ball. The 23rd Edwardian Ball! I went to the 23rd annual Edwardian Ball in San Francisco. This is my third time going to the Edwardian Ball and this video is my tips, my review, and partially vlog as well. So after I chit chat all throughout this first half, the second half will be entirely vlog and visuals. I love going to balls and random events and filming them of course, so you could plan for the next year or just live vicariously through me. So the Edwardian Ball is weird. It's weird in all the best ways possible. It honors the author Edward Gorey and his stories and it also kind of has the theme of the Edwardian era. So people do come dressed up in different decades, different styles, but at the end of night two there is a big performance or big storytelling of one of Edward Gorey's stories so let's just get through it it is a two night event and in the past my sister and I have only gone to night two this is the very first time we've gone to both nights because we wanted to see how different each night was the doors open at 8 p.m. and I told my sister let's get there early let's line up because I don't like waiting in line I'm anxious but we got there at 8.40, the line was pretty long, and there is no VIP tickets, no early entry. Every ticket is just general admission. And because the line is so long, it kind of goes right into a dark alley, one of San Francisco's dark, wet alleys. But did I feel unsafe? No, I felt very safe because there were hundreds of people there waiting in line to go to the ball, and also a man on stilts playing the saxophone. <laughs> Now what can you expect from the Edwardian Ball? This ball is all about the arts and arts in different mediums. There are performances on stage throughout all the different levels. There's belly dancing, burlesque, there's singing, there are musicians in all the floors, and then there are live artists doing paintings as well as... Am I missing another medium? You'll see, I'm going to put all the video and in between the performances, there's also a DJ who plays amazing music. I know that he plays every year, let's all go, oh wait, he, he plays a song, Istanbul, not Constantinople, and I love that song. That, the first time I heard that was 7th grade world history, brings me back. Istanbul, Constantinople, Istanbul, Constantinople. Now what else can you expect? There are three floors to the Regency Ballroom. The Grand Ballroom is where you have your entrance. That's where they have the big stage, the opening ceremony, and then the ending ceremony. The top floor is Museum of Wonders. Honestly, it is definitely like a museum. They have so much different art on the walls that you could purchase. And then there are caricature artists, there is body paint artists. This artist that was doing some sculpture of a face, amazing. And then the vendor bazaar is on the downstairs floor. They have the musicians on stage and then also obviously vendors where you could purchase various items. Now what the heck do you wear to the Edwardian Ball? New York Fashion Week take notes because everyone who comes here comes looking like they are the main character in everyone's story. Like I said, people are dressing up like it's different decades. You could be a flopper, you could be a queen in the Renaissance era, you could be in the medieval era, or you could be futuristic. There were people in like ABBA type clothing as well. Literally everything goes. They say on their website just dress as you would. I, I forgot what they said on their website, but whimsy. That's the theme. Whimsy. Big. Extravagant. Something that you don't, you might not typically wear in your everyday life. Or maybe you do, but you just want to be more all out. Here are some examples of what folks were wearing. I wish I was able to take photos of every single amazing person that was there. But I also am going to take some photos from the official website as well because my photos are poop. Now we're going to talk about logistics, safety, security, parking. I know if you're a person who's anxious like me going to an event for the first time, I want to know all of these things. So first of all, I think security was really great. They're really great every year that I experience. There is um, metal detectors. They check your bags before you go in. And then my sister said because she was wearing like super massive heels on the second night and walking down the stairs that a security guard was like holding his hands out just in case that she fell because I'm pretty sure she would have fallen if she was like duh, 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 duh. Now this isn't a problem that I encountered this year but last year 
let me lay out the thing for you so when we wait in line we're waiting in line in the dark dank alley like i said and then from that alley there's um, a constable who tells you either wait in this entrance going into the security line or you walk all the way on the opposite side of the door and enter through this side so last year when my sister and i we had to wait on the second side there was no security guard hanging out on this side to direct people to the real actual line so people coming from this side were you know basically cutting the line they, they didn't know any better they thought this was the actual line anyway so once you go through security on the first night we were like in the foyer and then you have to show your ID to get a drinking 21 plus wristband. On the first night, this caused a lot of traffic in the foyer, but on the second night, they instead went outside and started giving people in line the wristbands. That made the process move a lot faster. I thought that was great. Also, there is coat check at the entrance, $5 or $10 per person. In the past, it was only cash. This year, they have their little iPad. Or was it cash last year? Maybe it was two years ago that was cash only. But anyway, you could bring your credit card, you could bring your Apple Pay anywhere now. There is no official parking for the Regency Ballroom. There is no parking garage, no parking lot. You're gonna just have to go to any random SF parking garage and then walk from there. Now for the amount of people going, night one definitely has less people than night two. Although, if we wanted to watch something on a third floor museum, they actually had a security guard at the stairs saying that the upstairs was closed for the time being. And I'm assuming that meant there were way too many people up there on night one especially so i was like that's the first time i ever heard that i'm not sure if they're like i don't want to say that they are overselling tickets because this is a very large venue there's definitely a lot of room in the grand ballroom but a majority of the time people are up on the third floor where the space is quite tiny um so technically i guess all the people can fit in this venue it's just that when everyone wants to be upstairs, that's when it's a problem. So they do have people posted up there just to say, stay downstairs, you can't come up for like, what, an hour or until the show is over? On night two, my sister and I made sure we got upstairs to the museum so we were able to see the burlesque show and the aerial artists. We got there at a good time and then we got a seat on the floor. But, you know, right before the show starts, it gets packed, it gets so sardini in there and there was a situation where person one bumped into person two person two fell to the floor person two bumped my sister and then my sister was behind me so i don't know how many times this happens but i'm sure that it definitely could be it could have been much worse I mean, those situations they just scare me because you you know all those news articles that go out about like crowd crushes and things so in the middle of the second performance my sister and i went downstairs it's even a struggle to get down and leave because people are just like standing everywhere you would have to like uh, squeeze past so you could finally get back down to the main ballroom the bathroom situation was all right i didn't have to wait in too long of a line but i did only have to go once on the first night because i was so dehydrated from all the alcohol but who is eating a tangerine in the bathroom stall of the 23rd annual edwardian ball i walked into the stall and there was a tangerine peel on the floor so if that was you what are you doing but honestly i'd probably do the same that's enough about the logistics, let's get to the performances and the installations. So on night one, we went straight up to the third floor because we wanted to see the museum, but this is the first time they ever had a door that said please knock and a line waiting outside of it. And I was like, oh, maybe this is how they're filtering people in and out to make sure it doesn't get too full. But turns out, once we got through the door, there was actually a performance going on and it was interesting because it was a performance on the floor in a very small room. So if you wanted to exit or enter, you'd have to like walk right up across the performers. That's rude. No one wanted to do that. We all watched the performance. It was um, a belly dancing performance. And then after the belly dancing performance was done, we walked through a door this is where we saw was where the live tarot reading was happening and i thought that was like a really cool thing they were going to have a live tarot for the first time but it turns out you had to have a card beforehand in order to ask the tarot reader a yes or no question but not everyone got this card me and my sister didn't get a card and then i heard the people behind us there's like oh we didn't get a card so if you were waiting in line for the tarot reading and you don't have a card 
then you just continue walking like don't even think about it what was also interesting was that the door that said please knock didn't say that this is where the tarot reading was happening and it wasn't until halfway through the night that there were people outside telling others you know i think they were the workers telling people this is in line for tarot reading line up for the tarot reading so they didn't have that until halfway through the night or they could have had a sign that said live tarot reading this way line up here this is the first time that i've seen this layout done at the edwardian ball in the past three years that i've gone they like to change the layouts a little bit here and there but this is the first time that they closed off part of the third floor in order to do their whole maze drinks this year were fantastic they have the same set of cocktails every year and i've almost gone if not already gone through every single cocktail on that list my favorite has to be the corpse reviver i've had that about four times throughout two nights but that's the one that i definitely recommend night one was very fun enjoyed the performances danced around a lot and although i did talk simultaneously about night one and night two now we are starting night two so night two was insane because the amount of people that come of course the line was extra long this time to wait to come in but first thing that we recommend to do if you're into this is go right to the live fashion art artist i've never seen something done like this before and we only had to wait 20 minutes because we put our names on the wait list like very early on in the night the artist did say that sometimes the wait list is a few hours long here is the final product so it's $45 per person on this small paper, but on a bigger piece of paper, I believe it was $65 per person. This is the outfit that I was wearing that night with my mask, and then this is my sister's outfit. I think this is amazing. He does everything standing there and so cool. He takes about 10 to 15 minutes, I believe. I've had caricatures done before, but I've never gotten a live fashion art done. Oh. Eddie Sue on Instagram, E-D-I-H-S-U. The previous two years, there were photo booths at the ball. So this is an example of what the photo booth was, like a free picture that you could get. They didn't have that this year, but there were just many places where you could have like a photo op, take a picture on your phone. The vendor bazaar is open to the public in the mornings of the Edwardian ball, you know, before the ball even opens up, which I think is awesome. You don't have to have a ticket to the Edwardian ball to enter for the morning bazaar. This is something that I bought last year. I thought it was so fun. I got a light up rose and I was dancing with this all night. This year, this is something that my sister got from a small business called K Sugars. Real fruit that is preserved and then there's resin on there so these are kiwis and i think that's awesome this was 30 dollars. and then when i got this one last year this one was 10 dollars. i don't think i saw this business there this year though we got this right before we left so we didn't have to carry any items throughout the night the main reason we went on two nights this time was to see if there was a big difference between the friday night and the saturday night and performance wise there are some performances that do happen on saturday that don't happen on friday but we did see stage performances on Friday that instead performed in a museum on Saturday and then vice versa. For sure, if you're like really into the big performances and want to see the Edward Gorey story being told, that's only on Saturday night. And if you do want a big party feel with a lot of people dancing on the floor, Saturday night is definitely for you. But otherwise, if you just want to experience the ball and not have too many people around, then maybe Friday would work out better for you. I'm not gonna lie, I do get tired when I'm at the ball. I do like to stay for the whole duration, like five or six hours. So, you know, my eyes get a little sleepy and my voice gets so tired from cheering for all the performances. Luckily, there is a tea section right on the main ballroom floor chairs tables and it's donation based so you pay whatever amount you want for the tea they give it to you in a nice little tea cup and plate there's a biscuit on there and you get a choice of tea and sugar if you want the best experience ever i don't know why my sister and i did not go there on the first year or the second year i recommend it not many people do it Sometimes it does get a little busy, but I'm really into tea nowadays, so I love that there was that option. We were also sitting there doing the main Edward Gorey performance, um, so your view may not be the best. I was not able to see some parts of the stage, but whatever, my feet were killing me, so I sat down and I enjoyed it. Now that was my experience at this year's Edwardian Ball. I hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful, I don't know, but I'm gonna quit yapping and the next part of this video is gonna be all vlog and walkthrough.
Now we're about to get ready to go to the Edwardian Ball just down the street. And what's our outfit theme today? So it's basically anything that's whimsy, anything that you don't typically wear on a regular day. People like to wear black clothes. I always wear black every year, but now I'm going to change it up. She is, uh, this is Marie Antoinette. <laughs> Marie dress. Antoinette and from, from Siberia. From Siberia. And I'm the queen of hearts. Okay. Off with their heads. I'm going to be bringing my GoPro Hero 11, strapping it on my purse. So we're going to do like a bunch of walkthroughs and I'm going to give you maybe, hopefully, a better experience than I did the last two years ago. Here is my OOTD. This is from Timu. This is from my sister's closet. And then I'm wearing... These brown boots from Forever 21. OOTD. OOTD. Red dress. Lace made corset. Black bag. <laughs> So this is the first time I'm seeing the footage on my computer and I did strap my GoPro right on my purse and I'm walking, oh my gosh, I did not know how unstable this looks. I apologize for that. Looks like this is how the night is gonna go for, you know, the next few minutes, but um, I hope you enjoy as much as possible that you can. This is gonna give you the gist of what the Edwardian Ball looks like in the Regency Ballroom. I'm gonna take you up to the third level, the main ballroom, and throughout the bazaar as well. Did you miss it? If he made it, he said Amazon. 
I believed him. Actually, he made it. I believed him. I said, oh, okay, Amazon. Okay, got it.
everyone time check it's 12 21 a.m i lost my voice i guess i was cheering that loud apparently for all the performers but we're back in the hotel now and i believe tomorrow's event ends later like at 2 a.m or maybe 1 a.m but it was so much fun people are so nice this girl just turned around while she was watching performance she was like oh my god i just saw you and you were so cute and i was like oh my god thank you and then there was this other lady who kept wanting to take pictures with us and dance with us. It was absolute fun. And now we're just going to get ready for tomorrow's event. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Hey everyone, it's night two of the Edwardian Ball. So here's my outfit, completely, completely different from night one. The full look, I have this masquerade mask. I kind of plan to wear it more as a hat than actually as a mask, but we'll see. And then same necklace as last night, same earrings as last night. Everything else I'm wearing, I had borrowed from my sister. We have this almost floor length dress and then gloves. Heading down to the lobby now. It is exactly 8 o'clock, which is when the Edwardian Ball opens. We wanted to be there at 7.45 in line, but you know, we take too long. Take too long to get ready. Myself and my youthful ward, the beautiful Alexa of our kick and base. Hi! Hooray! For entertainment here at the 23rd Edwardian Ball! Let's go play. That's French for if you win. 